Good morning, everybody. Is there anybody in the house of God happy this morning? Happy in Jesus. Amen. And he's someone to be happy about because he's been so good to us, keeps being so good to us. And since he's always been good, good right now, uh, re it stands to reason that he will be good tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, I, I come primarily to lift Jesus up. Uh, and the reason I lift him up, because he deserves it. Amen. He deserves it, and the second reason I lift him up, because if he's lifted up, he'll draw all humans unto himself. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. This is another beautiful day, and we thank God for these beautiful days. He is in control of weather, and he's controlled the whole earth. He holds it in the palm of his hand, and we just thank God for it. We thank God for it. And this truly is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad therein. We want to ask you to grab your Bibles and turn to the Psalms, Psalms, the 30th division, and we're going to shine a bright light and use our magnifying glasses to focus in on verse 5, Psalms 30 and verse 5. Then we're going to ask you if you would stand with us just for a few moments. We are not trying to force you against your will to engage in any low-impact low aerobic exercises. We're just asking you to stand out of respect for reading God's Word. Psalms 30 and verse 5. And the Word of God reads, For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And I heard a few people wanted to join in, so let's, let's go ahead and read it together. Let's read it one more time together. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Today our message is entitled, Hold On Till Morning, Let Us Pray. Dear Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit will lead our hearts, lead our minds, and lead us through your Holy Word. We pray, the Lord, that your Holy Word will make an indelible mark upon our lives, that we will be changed that we will not be the same, that we will leave here more courageous and more powerful than we ever been before. Grant us knowledge, grant us wisdom, and in all of our getting, may we get understanding. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Hold on till morning. My friend, Psalms 30 is a psalm of thanksgiving celebrating the recovery from great danger, probably a serious illness. This is very personal. The psalmist expresses his deep gratitude to God for his goodness and recalls his experiences during his illness. The psalm is now read at the Feast of Dedication. And in the heart of this psalm, he says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Since the first weeks of Earth's history, there has always been night and morning. At the end of each day of creation, the Bible states that the evening and the morning was the first through the seventh day. Before the fall of Adam and Eve, the night was not viewed in the same sense that it is looked upon today. But after the fall of man, the night has taken on a more ominous connotation, so much so that the Bible says in Revelation 21, 25, that the holy city, New Jerusalem, will have no more nights. But let us be aware of this fact, my friend, that throughout time, from the first day of Earth's history, Either literally or figuratively, there has always been night and morning. 
Every person in this building would have to deal with the night in the morning. The night tends to become the greatest challenge for most people. Thus, it is imperative, my friend, that we learn how to make it through the night. Because if we make it through the night, we will see the morning. The night is the time for weeping. The night is the time that we go through trouble. The night can be a time of depression. The night stress producing. The night pain and hardship. The night cold and lonely. The night broken and beaten. People have even given up on God during the night. So my Christian friends, uh, we have to learn, my friends, how to make it through the night. This night, this world, this world, this world we live in is full of darkness. And the darkness of this world could drown us in the sea of despair if we are defeated in the night. Everyone in this auditorium is going through or has recently come out of some sort of nighttime experience. You might as well tell the truth. Maybe you're having problems with your family. Maybe you're dealing with the loss of a loved one. Maybe you can't get the victory over that habit. Maybe you're having challenges in school. Maybe you're dealing with personal issues, illness, or wayward children, or even wayward parents. Maybe you have lost a job. Maybe you are dealing with abuse, stress, fear, discouragement. The message for you today is to hold on to morning. Help is on the way. Hold on till morning when there will be no more night, no more pain, no more frowning, no more crying, and no more dying. Hold on till morning when you'll be able to lay your sword in your shield down by the riverside and study war no more. Hold on till morning for the storm is passing over. Just hold on. For trouble will not last always. Today, my friends, we're going to discuss a strategy. Oh, yeah. We're very intentional. We're going to discuss a strategy today for nighttime warfare. We're going to share with each other three points this morning. Three points by the grace of God that could give us the nighttime victory. Three points that you and I will have to remember so that we will be able to make it through the night and that the victory will be won. Three points so that we'll be able to hold on until morning. First, 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 let's dive into this. Go ahead and, get, and jump in here right now. First, the first thing we need to remember, this is the first point. The first thing we need to remember if we're going to make it through the night, if we're going to be able to endure through this nighttime warfare that we're going through right now in this dark world we live in. First, always remember, always remember that you have to go through the night before you can see the morning. Oh, yes. Before you can see the morning, you're going to have to go through the night. We have to come to the realization that none of us are immune to the implications of the night. All of us are going to have to deal with nighttime experiences. Let me try to help somebody by giving an, a, 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 a true-to-life illustration. There is no guarantee that when we leave church this morning that we are making home. That's no guarantee. We, we, we are living in a dangerous time. So in as much as we are going to have to go through the night, we need to learn how to brace ourselves and expect anything. We have no guarantees. We don't know what the next moment will bring. So we need to learn how to hold on to God and just understand 
that we have to go through these nighttime experiences before we'll be able to enjoy the morning. Somebody saying, why is me? And, 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 and all of us can say that. But I want to tell you that you just have to accept the fact that you have to go through it. Am I right about it? And be mindful. There is the other side of through. But you can't make it to the other side of through until you go through whatever you have to deal with. And I don't know what it is. I don't know what you're going through. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you are in one or two classes. You are either in it or you're about to go in it. Am I right about it? So, but, but you can't get to the other, the other side of through by any other way except by going through it. You can't go around it. You can't go over it. You can't go under it. You have to go through it. Am I right about it? And I do want you to understand you're not the only one. Everyone has to go through it. Everyone have challenges. Everyone have problems. Everyone have to cry sometimes. But God has made some beautiful promises to us as we go through it. Over in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 in verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 in verse 13, the Bible says, There has no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. Listen to my Christian friends. There is no temptation that has come upon us, have taken us, that we have to go through, that, 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 that no one else has to go through. All of us have to deal with these things. These things are normal. They are common to human beings. So, so what I'm saying is uh, bereavement, bearing a loved one, that is common to human beings. All of us have to deal with bereavement. Am I right about it? Uh, being stressed out. All of us have to deal with the pressures of life. Am I right about it? And some of us, the pressures are so thick and so dense, sometimes we feel like we're about to lose our mind. And the truth of the matter is, if I was to tell it today, and I'm going to tell it, that many of us would have lost our minds had it not been for the Lord. Am I right about it? In fact, I wonder, how, does pe how can people live without the Lord? I would have lost my mind a long time ago had it not been for Jesus. But I'm so glad that he's been right there by my side. And I'm sure you're glad about it today too, amen? Listen to me. The Bible says, my Christian friends, that the trials we go through, the challenges we go through, the temptations that we have to deal with, these are common to people. But our God is faithful. Oh, I'm so glad today that we serve a faithful God. So faithful to us, my Christian friends, that he would not allow us to go through more than we are able. Amen? And what he does, he provides an escape hatch. He provides a hiding place. He provides a way that we can escape so that we are able to bear it. Sometimes we thought it was over. We thought it was curtains. But I'm so thankful that God has provided for us a hiding place under the shadow of the Almighty. Has he not done it for you, my Christian friends? Has he not hid us oftentimes in the cleft of the rock? 
He looked out for us when we thought it was curtains, when we thought it was over, when we thought that our goose were cooked. Jesus came through and made a way out of no way. He opened up doors that we could not even see. And I'm so, so thankful for my Christian friends that I have Jesus in my life. He is faithful. I didn't say we are faithful because sometimes we were not. Am I right about it? Even when we were not faithful, he was faithful. Am I right about it? I'm so glad to have Jesus in my life. I'm so glad that he has been there for you and been there for me. We are not immune to the nighttime experiences. We are not immune to the challenges that come with life. But whatever we're going through, Jesus is there with us, and he makes sure that we will never have more night than we are able to bear. Oh, my Christian friends, my Christian friends, the devil, he's not allowed to do more to us than we are able to bear. God tells the devil, you can go this far, but no further. Somebody missed their praise break. Oh, man, the devil was on, on you like white on rice. But then God said, devil, you have to stop here. Am I right about it? And he did not take from you what you feared that he would take from you. I am so glad that God knows how to put a leash on the devil. He knows how to put a chain on the devil. It's like when you step into somebody's yard and the dog looks up at you ferociously and he starts running and jumping toward you, but before he gets to you, the chain snatches him back. Am I right about it? And you are able to bear it. I'm so thankful that God knows how to pull back on the enemy and say this far, but no further. You do understand that every attack of the enemy, every weapon that he throws your way, it has to pass by God's filter before it gets to you. And there's just some things that the law would not allow you to have to go through. He blocks it. He stops it. And when the devil comes in like a flood, he will lift up a standard against him. Am I right about it, my friends? And he has done it so many times. Oh, my Christian friends. But when he tells you that he does not allow more than you can bear, what that means is this. Because there's two sides to this coin. One side of the coin, he will not let you go through more night than you can bear. The other side of the same coin is, if you got it, that means you can bear it. Uh, I, know, I know you feel a shout coming on right now. You're just trying to keep it down because, you, you know, you, you want to, you know, be sophisticated. But I know you feel a shout coming up right now. <laughs> if you got it, you can bear it. That person who threatened you, if you got it, you can bear it. Oh, uh, that bill that you got in the mail. I'm not talking about the one in the black print. I'm talking about the one in the red print. Most of you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm asking you, when you get bills in the mail and the print is in big, bold, red print, four or five of you know what I'm talking about. The rest of you, you, you just listen, take our word for it because you never had to deal with it. But about four or five of you, I'm going to ask that four or five, would you just testify with me? Usually when you get red print, that means something has gone wrong. That means that you had a paid, you had a date that something needed to be paid, and the date had come, and the date has gone, and it has not been paid yet. Come on, that three or four, you stay with me, because you, you, you're about to, some of you are about to leave me. Come on, stick with me three or four, because cause, cause, cause the people need to know I'm telling the truth up here. And, 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 and when you get some, I'm talking about a bill with red print. That usually means that something is about to be cut off or somebody is about to be evicted. Okay, some of those memories are coming back now. So all of a sudden it's coming. You remember it now. But I'm here to tell you, 
if you got, if you received, if it was handed to you, if it was delivered to you, if you see it in your mailbox, if they knocked on your door and gave it to you, that means if you got it, that means you can handle it. It's not more than you can bear. Because God forces the enemy to go through his filtration system before it gets to you. Oh, my Christian friends, I'm here to tell you uh, that God allows nighttime experiences, but he would not allow more than you are able to bear. But he does allow it. He's allowing it, my friends, because he's allowing opportunities for character building. Are you listening to me? He, he, he didn't only go to heaven to prepare a place for you and for me, but he also went to heaven to, pre to prepare us for the place. So he's in the process of preparing us and pruning us and molding us. Am I right about it? So he allows certain lifetime, nighttime experiences as character building experiences. Well, you want me to read this, don't you? Job, 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 Job 23. I didn't say job, I said Job. Job 23 and verse 10. Job 23 and verse 10. The Bible says in Job 23, 10, it says here, it says, it says, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Oh, my Christian friends, God is molding us. God is pruning us. God is preparing us. Am I right about it? And he's allowing a specific portion. God has, 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 has come up with a, a plan to help us but not harm us. He has mixed up some nighttime medicine. And he's placed in the medicine a little sunshine and a little rain. Not too much, but just right. He has put in the medicine. I'm talking about, I mean, they custom made for each, each and everybody's experiences. They custom made for your system. Custom made for your family. Custom made for, your, for, your, for what you have gone through in your life. A little bitter and a little sweet. A little, a little, uh, a little nighttime and a little daytime. Not enough to help hurt us, but enough to heal us. Come on, somebody. And God, my Christian friends, is preparing our, our characters. He allows struggle. He allows trial to prepare the soul for peace, my Christian friends. So we have to learn to be patient as we are going through the night. As God uses the night in the perfecting of our characters, it might take some time for some of us to pass the test that God has, for, has designed for us to take. Am I right about it? See, some of us are a little hard-headed. Nobody want to testify right now. Don't write. You can just keep it to yourself. Some of us, we have to go through the first grade three or four times before he can move us on to the second grade. And God allows us to go through these tests so that we may pass the test. Uh, and he wants us to pass the test so that our characters might be prepared for peace, amen, to be prepared for rest, to be prepared for the, his kingdom. But it's going to take some of us a little time. But we still have to learn to be patient, my friends. The Bible says in Luke 21 and verse 19, in Luke chapter 21 and verse 19, it's recorded there the words of Jesus. Jesus said, in your patience, Possess ye your souls. Oh, my Christian friends, our souls dependent upon how willing we are to wait on the Lord, how willing we are to be patient with him, 
how willing we are to trust him even when we can't trace him. In your patience, possess you, your souls. Many of the problems that we have gotten ourselves into was due to our impatience. We didn't want to wait on the law. Somebody said haste makes waste. Am I right about it? I'm here to tell you, my Christian friends, it is best to learn how to wait on the law. It is best to learn how to be patient with God. Isaiah 40, Isaiah 40 in verse 31 says, uh, puts it like this, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Oh, my Christian friends, we need to learn to wait on them. So first, the first, the first, the first point in this strategy, the first part of the strategy that we have to remember, we have to remember that you must go through the night before you can see the morning. The second, the second, the second, the second, the second part of the strategy to make it through the night is, 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 is the second is you must always remember that God is responsible for bringing the morning. But we are responsible for holding on. Make sure we get this. Don't miss it. Don't miss it, my friends. Bringing the morning is God's job. Performing the miracle is God's job. Making a way is God's job. Providing the blessing is God's job. Taking care of the bills is God's job. Healing our family member is God's job. Taking care of our situation is God's job. Bringing the morning is God's job. Holding on until the morning comes is our job. Holding on and waiting for the blessing, that's our job. Waiting for the miracle, that's our job. Waiting for the healing is our job. Waiting for the deliverance is our job. Waiting for a way to be made out of no way, that's our job. It is God's job to bring the morning. It is our job to wait until the morning comes. We have to hold on. We have to hold on. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10 in verse 23, Hebrews chapter 10 in verse 23, the Bible says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without what? Without wavering, like tumbleweed, carried by every wind of doctrine. Don't know, don't know north, south, east from west, trying everything and not being convicted with nothing. The Bible says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful, that promise. Oh, my Christian friends, the Bible lets us know, my friends, we need to hold fast. This right here word that's used in the Greek for hold fast, uh, if we was to uh, translate that or interpret it or define, let's try to define, let's do that, let's, let's define the word. Uh, it would be like any... Uh, device that's used to hold something in place. So it could read, let us, instead of hold fast, it could read, let us clamp ourselves to the profession of our faith. Let us screw ourselves to the profession of our faith. Let us nail ourselves to the profession of our faith. Let us glue ourselves to the profession of our faith without wavering. That's what hold fast means. Any various device that holds something in place, that won't allow it to be moved. We need to be unmovable. Am I right about it? Hold fast. Hold fast. Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 25 says, But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. Maybe. You can't leap over a building in a single bound. Maybe you are not faster 
than a bullet. Maybe you are not stronger than a locomotive. Just maybe you don't fit these descriptions. But that which you have already, what God has already given you, the victories you have already won, hold fast. Don't go back. Don't, don't go sliding down fool's hill, backsliding, my Christian friends. At least hold on what you have. If you learn to keep God's commandments, if that's all you got, just hold on to that until you get something more. But don't go back. That which you have already. Hold fast till I come. It is his job to come. It's our job to hold on until he comes. Can't you say amen? Oh, my Christian friends, the only direction you want to move is forward. The only way you want to go is upward. That's what's going on. That's what sanctification is all about. It is progressive. It's like a Jacob's ladder where every round goes in what direction? Higher and higher. But never go backwards. Never slide down. Never be a backslider. That which you have already, hold fast till I come. Oh, my Christian friends, I have found out in life that if you're going to hold on, and if you're going to be patient, and if you're going to be able to wait, if you're going to be able to hold on until the deliverance come, until the blessing come, you're going to have to learn how to encourage yourself. It is difficult to hold on and wait when you are discouraging yourself. We have to learn how to encourage ourselves if we're going to be able to follow this strategy and hold on. Psalm, Psalm, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. First Samuel, first Samuel, first Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6. First Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6. The Bible says here, and David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his, for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. All my Christian friends, David came to the point in his experiences with the Lord which he learned how to encourage himself. See, my friends, David couldn't wait on the saints to encourage him because the saints were angry with him. The saints wanted him to be stoned. Make sure you understand what I mean. I mean the church, it's like the church had a board meeting. And they say, Pastor, I make a motion that we stone David. And before the pastor they could say it, somebody said, I second that motion. And then a unanimous vote. Uh, 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 the people were angry with him because David got caught up in some mess. Not only... Was he, did he get caught up in an adulterous affair, but he tried to cover it up by using the strategic, uh, 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 the, the strategic ability and, and the strategic gift that God had given him for God's kingdom. He used it to cover up his adulterous affair, which led to the, the woman's husband being killed. Anybody remember this? So the people were angry with him. The people were grieved with him. And, the, and they wanted to get his head. So he couldn't wait for the pastor to call him and encourage him. He couldn't wait to the deacon board and deaconess to drop by his house and encourage him. He couldn't wait for an, for an encouraging email. He couldn't wait for an encouraging a tweet. See, some of us, we say, well, the reason I'm not going back to that church because nobody encouraged me. You have to get to the point in your Christian experience that you need to learn how to encourage yourself. Because sometimes we are depending on someone to encourage us who may need encouragement themselves. Somebody didn't get that. Somebody didn't pick it up. <laughs> Listen to me. Sometimes you are, you are learning how to lean 
and depend on people who may need somebody to hold them up. Sometimes you are asking money from somebody who is broke. I haven't found a witness yet. Sometimes you are asking for somebody to pick you up when their car is in the shop and they can't afford to get it out. So we need to get to the point in our Christian experience that we learn how to encourage ourselves in the Lord our God. My Christian friends, we need to learn how to encourage ourselves. Oh, my Christian friends, we need to learn how to say things like my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I wholly lean on Jesus' name. I'm trying to tell somebody in Albuquerque, oh Christ, the solid rock I stand, for all of the ground is sinking sand. There's somebody in this church today who didn't learn how to lean on Jesus. They learned how to lean on mama and daddy. But when mama and daddy got sick, and they couldn't prop us up any longer, when mama and daddy had to go and ride with the undertaker, and they was not there for us any longer, we were left without a leaning stick. But I'm here to tell you, you can make Jesus your leaning stick. You can learn how to lean and depend on Jesus. I found out that if I trust him, he will provide. Oh, my friends, I'm learning how to lean and depend on the day. I'm learning how to lean and depend on him. I learned how to say things to myself. I learned how to read the Psalms and read other parts of the Scriptures to encourage myself in the Lord. I learned how to sing songs to encourage myself in the Lord. I learned how to say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I learned how to say, naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return hither. The Lord gave, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I learned how to say, I learned how to say in Everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I've learned how to praise him. I've learned how to lift his name up. And I'm here to tell somebody in Albuquerque, and I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him with my whole heart. I'm going to praise him, my friends. I'm going to praise him during the good times and the bad times too. Oh, my Christian friends, we have to learn how to encourage ourselves Sometimes we have to encourage ourselves in the Lord because no one else is there to do it for us. We have to learn how, like in Ephesians 5 and verse 19, Ephesians 5, 19 says, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So first, my friends, first, 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 first remember that you have to go through the night before you can see the morning. Second, remember that it's God's job to bring the morning, and it's our job to hold on until the morning comes. Third and last, third and last, third and last, always remember to never stop fighting through the night. Oh, no, 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 no don't give up. Don't give up. Sometimes, my Christian friends, it's like a hand-to-hand -hand combat with the devil. Have you been there? When you feel like that he was placing all his attention on you, and you feel like you was in, you was, you was in the 10th round of a match in Madison Square Garden with the devil, like hand-to-hand -hand combat. But my advice to Albuquerque Heights today, my friends, is do not accept defeat. Never stop fighting for righteousness. Never stop fighting in the night. Oh, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. You do know that there's a battle every Sabbath morning. It's the Sabbath morning battle. That's when the devil goes door to door. 
You didn't know the devil does door-to-door -door, door -door work, did you? <laughs> That's when the devil goes door-to-door -door to fight you, to keep you from being at church with the saints on Sabbath. You know he does that, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, the devil, the, the, uh, 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 I'm going to try to illustrate it. Like the devil, he goes out door to door, and he comes to our houses, you know that, don't you? And, and, and he goes knocking on the door. He came, to this, he came to the first guy's house, and he knocked on the guy's door. The guy answered the door, and the devil said, you discouraged. Don't go to church. The people out there, they don't like you anyway. You discouraged. Going back to bed. And the person said, yeah, I am discouraged. They've been going back to bed. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip church this Sabbath. He went to the next, next person's house, knocked on their door. They came to the door, and they said, and the devil said to them, uh, you have a headache. <laughs> you don't feel good. Go on, go on back to bed. You can take a Sabbath off. Then the devil gets to the next person's house, knock on their door. And he told them, man, work has been hard this week. You tired. You sleepy. You need to, you need, I'm going to tell you one of, the, one, of the lang, one of the things the devil tells people. You need a vacation from church today. You, you, need, to, you need to get some rest and get some sleep. And then, they, then, they, then we go on to bed. But then he came to the fourth person's house. But this person has been spending a little time with Jesus. This person understood that the only way he's going to see the morning is that he make it through the night. This person understood uh, that it is God's job to bring the healing. It is God's job to bring the encouragement. It is God's job uh, to bring the deliverance. And it was his job to hold on until the morning came. He understood that he needed to encourage himself in the Lord, his God. So the devil came and knocked on his door and told the guys, said, man, you discouraged. And the guy said, yes, it's been hard. I've been going through a whole lot. But there is encouragement with the, in, the, in, the, in the assembly of the saints of God. Then the devil came back with another. He said, but you have a headache. Yes, I don't really feel like I want to feel. But there is healing in the assembly with the saints of God. Then the devil said, well, uh, you know, you've been working all week. You tired. You sleep. Why don't you go back to bed? Yeah, man, it's been a rough week, but there is strength in the assembly with the people of God. So then the, the devil threw all kinds of deceptions, all kinds of stresses, all kinds of discouragement on this man. And the guy got sick and tired of the devil. He turned to the devil and said, devil, you are a liar. The devil packed his bag, turned around, and went back to his hellish location. One of his demons said, devil, you come back pretty early this Sabbath morning. You just spend a little more time out doing your door-to-door -door work. And the devil turned to the guy and said, but turned to the demon and said, well, one of the church members told me I was a liar, and I got discouraged. <laughs> oh, listen to my friends. It's like hand-to-hand -hand combat just getting to church on Sabbath. But if you stand your ground, if you follow through with your plans and come on out anyway, I promise you, you shall be blessed. Oh, my Christian friends, he don't give up, early, he don't give up easily. I remember when the enemy attempted to bring about an eternal night with no hopes of us ever seeing another morning again. But I'm here to tell somebody at Albuquerque Heights, Jesus never stopped fighting. The enemy dragged my Jesus through a kangaroo court and accused him through the testimony of bought and paid for lying witnesses. But Jesus never stopped fighting. They slapped him around. They whipped him until he was a bloody mess. Pressed down upon his brow a crown made of thorns and placed a reed in his hand and attempted to make him a spectacle. They, then they took the reed and used it to beat my Jesus with it. But Jesus never stopped fighting. 
They nailed him to a cruel cross. They raised him high and they stretched him wide. And, and, and my Lord hung his head and died for my sins and your sins. As they were placing him in a tomb that has never been used before. It appeared to them all that Jesus had given up the fight and that the devil had won. Then someone remembered that they had peeped at Jesus' game plan. That on the third day, the Lord was going to get up and land a knockout blow on the enemy. Permission was given by Pilate to send soldiers to make sure that the Lord would not get up out the tomb. But I want to tell somebody in Albuquerque today, no matter how well the enemy plans to defeat you, God is always one step ahead of the enemy. They tried to keep him in the tomb, but on the third day did not my Jesus get up with all power of heaven and earth, declaring I am the resurrection and the life. And O death, where is thou staying? O grave, where is your victory? The Lord never gave in. He never gave up. He fought on till our midnight's return today. He fought on until the victory was won. He fought on till our salvation opportunity was secured. He fought on till the serpent's head was crushed and the devil was ruined. And I'm so glad that Jesus would not stop fighting. Anybody here glad that he didn't give up? Anybody here glad he didn't give in? Now, my friends, it is our responsibility. Now, we must make up our minds to stay in the fight. Now, we must fight on. It reminds me of the positive boxer. Uh, this boxer, he was not a very good pugilist, but he was very positive. He stepped into the ring and ran into his opponent's a right jab, which left him dazed. He said to himself, I'm dizzy, but I'm still up. After receiving a few combination blows, he, he was then left propped against the rope saying, I'm leaning, but I'm not down. Then his opponent went back to work on him again and left him face down in the corner of the ring. He said to himself, I'm down, but I'm not out. After pulling himself up before the count of 10, his opponent went back to work on him again. He was caught with a haymaker, uh, which left him flat on his back in the middle of the ring while he was saying, I'm passing out, but I'm still looking up. So my friends in Albuquerque, I want to tell you, hold on till morning. Hold on through the storm. Hold on through the rain. Hold on through the hurt. And hold on through the pain. Hold on like Job who said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Hold on like Jehoshaphat when he was told, the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. Hold on like Moses when he said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Hold on and persevere. Hold on and don't you fear. Hold on and never give up. Hold on and never give in. Hold on, you are about to win. Hold on and don't despair. My God will be right there. My God will turn your midnights in the day. My God will bring you out without a doubt. I don't know how. I don't know when. But if I hold on, if I keep the faith, sooner or later, the morning is going to come. Oh, it's going to come. Oh, my Christian friends, I just want to tell you that one day, the ultimate morning is going to come. It's going to be a glorious morning. Oh, it's going to be pitch black. The earth will be at its darkest point in earth's history. And then the enemy, he's about to engulf all of us in the miasma of his hellish plan of gross darkness. But then, out of the corner of our eyes, we will see in the distant sky 
the sign of the Lord's coming. It'll be like a cloud about the size of a man's hand. And as it gets nearer, we will realize it is the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with 10,000 times, 10,000 times, 10,000s of a cloud of angels coming back to call us home. Oh, my Christian friends, I look forward to it. In all the darkness that the devil has thrown our way will pale in comparison to the great eternal morning that Jesus brings. The question is not if he's going to do it or not. The question is, am I going to hold on until he does it? Am I going to keep the faith until he does it? Am I going to serve him and keep his commandments until he do it? I'm here to tell you, my Christian friends, whatever you're going through now, it will not compare to the great, beautiful, eternal morning that Jesus has promised to them who love him and keep his commandments. Oh, my friends, we'll be able to try to rehearse all of our trials, and we will have to jump and shout and declare, hallelujah, heaven is cheap enough. Oh, my Christian friends, it's going to be a beautiful morning, a bright, glorious morning, a morning that shall never end if we just hold on, if we just keep the faith, if we just keep our hands in Jesus' hand. The question is, I'm going to ask our appeal song singer to come up now. The question is, am I going to be ready? Are you going to be ready? My friends, I need to give a sad truth. The sad truth is that everybody will not be able to enjoy the joy of the morning. The only people who be able to receive the joy of the morning are those who keep their hands in Jesus' hand and follow him wheresoever he goes. Today, we need to make our minds up. Do we want to give it all over to the Lord and follow him all the way? Do you want to do it today? Fo follow him all the way. And if you follow him all the way, he's going to carry you to the morning. And on that great day, when we hear the midnight cry, we will know that we are on our way home. Amen? I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask my, my ministerial colleagues if they would pass out something for me. I want everybody to receive one. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lime green appeal card. I want everyone to receive one because as our appeal song singer sings, we need to make some decisions in this place today. Amen? And the decisions we make, they would be decisions for eternity. And we're going to pass them out right now to everyone. And we want you to prayerfully fill out your card, write your information in there, and check as many as applic applicable to you on the quiz card. I mean, not the quiz card, excuse me. I, must, I got so used to the nighttime revival service, I'm talking about quiz, not quiz card, but appeal card. And we're going to just reflect upon the goodness of God and the beautiful, bright ways of mourning that he wants to bring us as our appeal song singer sings.